There's an estimated 60,000 different species of trees on our planet, which have evolved to cover a wide range of shapes and sizes. The ones that stand out the most, though, are those that reach great heights beyond what was believed possible. So join me as we take a look at the 15 tallest trees and plants on planet Earth. Number 15, Cary, 197 feet. Only growing in the high rainfall zone within the southwest botanical province of Western Australia, the Cary tree is a species of eucalyptus that's able to grow to extraordinary heights. Normally, they reach a maximum of up to 197 feet, but can on occasion eclipse this and reach as high as 300 feet, which makes them the tallest that grow in Western Australia. Most Cary trees grow in poor quality soil, so have developed alternative means to get nutrients needed to support their size, namely the fact that they will almost always flower directly after a forest fire to make use of the nutrients that have been released by the combustion of plant debris and other materials. Thought to live for as long as 300 years, they develop a light gray or cream-colored bark, but the timber itself is a deep mahogany color that's used for flooring and furniture, as well as long structural supports like roofs because of how long and not free the boards are. Despite having been used in the logging industry since Western Australia was first settled by new colonists of the country, felling carries is now becoming more controversial because of the important role they play in the natural ecosystem. They're so big and alter the ground soil in such a way that carry forests support as many as 2,000 other species of plants, let alone the countless animals that rely on them too. Number 14, Shining Gum, 230 feet. Known scientifically as the Eucalyptus nitens, the Shining Gum tree is a species that's native to Australia, particularly the regions around Victoria and New South Wales. Identifiable by its smooth bark that can be white, gray, or yellow in color, they're unusual in the way the bark sheds in ribbons as opposed to in small chunks, as is the case with most other species. They prefer to grow at high altitude, in some cases on ground that's an elevation of up to 4,900 feet, and when they're in the perfect environment, they have a need to reach up as high as they possibly can. Typically, a shining gum tree would be expected to reach a height of around 230 feet, but on occasions, individual specimens have been known to go higher than 300 feet. The tree grows so large and produces such a quantity of wood in a relatively short time that they're one of the three species that are regularly grown on plantations in Tasmania to provide timber for construction and furniture. They're also often planted in areas where certain mollusks or insects are unwanted because there are toxins in the bark and the tree's oil that can deter them from establishing themselves. Number 13, Tualong, 289 feet. Found in the rainforests of Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, and the Philippines, the Tuolong tree, which is known by several other names, including the Tapong, the Mangaris, and the Bangris, is also one of the tallest known species of tropical tree, with one specimen measured to reach 289 feet above the ground. They mainly only grow in lowland forests away from other tall trees, and this means that they tower over the main canopy and require huge mounds of buttress roots to keep them stable and absorb all of the nutrients that they need. To be as efficient as possible with their growth, Tualongs only grow branches higher than the rest of the canopy, at heights above 100 feet, and they also have slippery trunks that make them extremely difficult to climb. The result of this is that sun bears are unable to reach the branches, and this makes Tualong trees a preferred location for giant honeybees to hang their combs without risk of being disturbed. The presence of the bees also protects the trees in an unexpected way. As honey is so valuable, it's more profitable for landowners to leave them in place as opposed to logging them for their timber. Number 12, Alpine Ash. The alpine ash, also known as the gum top stringy bark, is a species of eucalyptus tree that grows in regions across southeastern Australia. Identifiable by their straight trunks, they have stringy bark on the lower half of their trunks and smooth white bark on the upper half. They usually grow to a height of around 150 feet, but in the right conditions have been known to reach almost double that. It is one of the most common types of tall trees found in this part of Australia and tend to grow particularly well in wet forests with deep soil, but also on slopes at altitudes of up to 4,900 feet. Of course, with their prevalence, the alpine ash trees are often felled to provide timber for building projects, but if they're allowed to continue growing, they develop club-shaped buds, which are up to a fifth of an inch or half a centimeter long and can be green, yellow, or red in color. They can then go on to produce a glorious display of white flowers between December and March each year and will eventually form small fruits which attract a wide range of different bird species. 
Number 11, Denisia excelsa. Trees in South America face stiff competition from each other for both the nutrients from the ground and the sunlight from above. So it's no wonder that the continent's rainforests are home to some extremely large species, despite the tropical climate. One of the ones that stands out the most is the Denisia excelsa, which is also known as the Paraqua tree. Amazingly, it's actually a member of the pea family, but is on a whole different level to the ones that you'll see on farms. Growing to an average height of 200 feet, and with a recently discovered specimen measuring more than 292 feet, they are a dominant presence in the tropical dry forests where they establish themselves. The wood itself is tough and difficult to work with because it's extremely dense and has an irregular grain. And this has worked out well for the tree because it means loggers don't have any financial motivation to chop them down. Instead, they're usually allowed to continue growing and supporting the habitats around them and have in many places become vital to the maintenance of a healthy ecosystem. Believed to grow for more than 450 years, they develop buttress roots that can be up to 16 feet tall, and in some cases, the cylindrical trunks themselves will measure up to 10 feet in diameter. Number 10, brown top stringy bark, 295 feet. First collected and scientifically documented in 1777, the brown top stringy bark, or Tasmanian oak, was the original species of tree to be called a eucalyptus. Seen throughout southeastern Australia, they grow on average to a height of around 295 feet. And to support this size, their trunks become enormous with a diameter of up to 10 feet. The trunk is covered in a rough stringy bark and so are the branches that are more than three inches thick. But those that are thinner are instead covered in a smooth gray colored bark, which enables them to grow faster and without such tough restriction. Brown top stringy barks thrive in a wet and humid condition, especially on hilly and mountainous areas, and are one of the most common types of large trees in Australia. It's because of this and the sheer volume of wood that they produce that has led to them being the most important of all Australian hardwoods for human uses. The timber that's taken is of moderate hardness and of strength, which means it can easily be worked with, and is the cost-effective wood of choice when it comes to making pulp and for construction and manufacture, such as for house building, flooring, and furniture. Number nine, noble fir, 295 feet. The noble fir is a species native to North America where it's found in the Cascades and the Pacific Coast mountain ranges between California, Oregon, and Washington. In these environments, they'll often grow at altitudes of up to 4,900 feet above sea level, and they themselves are able to reach a height of up to 295 feet. Of course, it's rare for them to truly reach this size, which also sees them develop a trunk that's almost nine feet in diameter, and they're usually grown on farms to a much smaller size so that they can be sold as Christmas trees. And they're exactly what you'd expect from a festive tree. Instead of leaves that look similar to those of other species, the noble fir has needle-like ones that are up to 1.3 inches long, and purple and yellow-green cones can be up to eight inches long. The bark on the trunk of noble firs changes significantly as they age and starts as smooth and gray with occasional blisters caused by resin before turning reddish brown and rough as they get older. Number eight, Southern Blue Gum, 330 feet. The Southern Blue Gum is a species of evergreen tree that's native to southeastern Australia. And just like all the other tall trees in the country, it's a type of eucalyptus. Known for having extremely smooth bark, they can grow in a wide range of different conditions, which means they're one of the most commonly planted species of eucalyptus around the world and are particularly suited to countries with a Mediterranean climate. In Australia alone, there are more than 1.1 million acres of southern blue gum plantations, and they account for around 65% of all cultivated hardwood trees in the country. The wood it produces, however, doesn't make for good timber and is instead used as basic wood for construction and to make fence posts and poles. Depending on the environment, southern blue gums can grow very differently. On occasions, they may not become more than a shrub, but they'll normally grow to around 148 feet tall. In exceptional circumstances, though, they'll begin to develop lignotubers, which are where the trunk swells just beneath the ground to act as a nutrient store and protection against fire damage. And once this happens, they can supersize to a height of up to 330 feet. Early records from explorers detailed specimens that were even taller than this, but this ability is yet to be proven because those ones were cut down and it'll take decades or perhaps centuries for others to be able to do so. Number seven, Mena gum, 300 feet. 
The tree species that varies the most between being a moderate size or a supersized version is the manna gum, which is native to southeastern Australia. With very smooth bark, the trees normally grow to around 160 feet, but when they're in fertile soil and have a plentiful water supply, it's not uncommon for them to grow to a height of 300 feet. Known for their white flowers and hemispherical-shaped fruit, manna gums have for a long time been an important part of the traditions and culture of the indigenous Australians. They use the wood from the trees to make shields and bowls, and the sap which oozes out after insects bore into the bark can be dried to make a sugary sweet substance that's used in a number of different foods. This is also a highly adaptable species of tree, so much so that five different subspecies have been recognized that alter themselves slightly to adjust to differing conditions. One, for example, can grow in deep sand, while another is able to flourish in waterlogged regions that would cause most other trees to rot as they were developing. Number six, giant sequoia, 311 feet. Classified as an endangered species with no more than 80,000 individuals remaining, the giant sequoia, which is also called the giant redwood, only grows naturally in a specific region of Sierra Nevada in California. In fact, there are just 68 groves of these trees, which cover a combined area of 35,000 acres, most of which provides a humid climate with dry summers and snowy winters. Recorded as growing to a maximum height of 311 feet, they're some of the most massive trees on Earth thanks to the size of their trunks, which can be as much as 28 feet in diameter. To reach these kinds of sizes, the trees live for an extremely long time, with the oldest known specimen believed to be around 3,200 years, something that's even more remarkable because of how common forest fires are in the places where they grow. Giant sequoias have developed a clever means to survive these devastating events, though, which is why they can be so long-lived. It's all to do with the bark. It's surprisingly fire-resistant, and at the lower levels of the tree can be up to three feet thick, providing a tough shell around the delicate parts within. Number 5. Coast Douglas Fir Native to Western North America with a range that stretches between Northern California and British Columbia in Canada, the coastal Douglas fir usually lives for more than 500 years, with some specimens recorded as being older than 1,000 years. Growing to a maximum height of 390 feet, but with the current tallest known specimen measuring 327 feet, they're enormous trees that can thrive on a different range of conditions and will establish themselves in forests at a range of altitudes, from those that are at sea level to regions in the Californian mountains at an elevation of up to 5,900 feet. On mature trees, the bark is described as being thick and corky, and they need to be between 20 and 30 years old before they even start producing seeds. When they do, they start to develop an unusual type of cone, each of which holds up to 50 seeds and will drop to the forest floor in hopes that an animal will deposit it elsewhere. Due to their size, it's almost impossible for Coast Douglas firs to grow tightly packed against one another because they'd be competing for nutrients, so when they're too close, they'll simply stop producing seeds to prevent things from getting even worse. Number 4. Sitka Spruce, 330 feet Reaching a height of up to 330 feet and a trunk diameter of 16 feet, the Sitka Spruce is an imposing tree in the regions where it still grows. Named after the community of Sitka in Alaska, the species grows along the west coast of the United States, as far down as Northern California, and it was once a very popular type of tree for the logging industry, which means most of the older and larger specimens have long been cut down. It's therefore possible that they can grow much larger than we realize, but it'll take decades before this can be known for certain, with timber producers now restricted to newer trees and sustainable forests. Sitka spruces now grow in extremely wet and poorly drained soil, so have very shallow root systems and haven't developed any effective means of resisting fires, something that's adding an extra risk to the species due to climate change. Increasing winds mean they're becoming more likely to topple over, and when wildfires spread to the regions that they grow, they simply don't stand a chance of surviving in the same way as a species used to these threats can. This becomes a further problem because of how important Sitka spruces are to the surrounding ecosystem, where they provide a habitat for a range of mammals, birds, reptiles, and amphibians, meaning that since it takes more than 500 years for a new Sitka spruce to properly establish itself, it's important to protect the ancient ones that remain. Number 3. Mountain Ash, 330 feet the mountain ash, which is native to Tasmania and Victoria in Australia, is the tallest of all the known eucalyptus species. 
identifiable by a straight trunk with mostly smooth gray bark, except for at the base where it's rougher. These trees can normally be found growing in tall, wet forests, and to reach the loftiest heights, they have to be in a place where there's a high level of rainfall. It is a fast-growing tree with the ability to increase in height by as much as six feet per year for the first 20 years of their lives. By the age of 50, they're usually around 213 feet tall. The main threat to the mountain ash trees, apart from logging, is fire, and this is the main reason there aren't many of them reaching an age of more than 120 years. There are, however, some exceptions to this that reach 500 years or more, and these are the ones that have the chance to reach the highest heights. The current record holder for the tallest mountain ash is a tree called Centurion that grows in southern Tasmania. It was measured by a laser in 2018 and found to be 330 feet tall, and there's no sign of it slowing down. Number 2. Yellow Maranti The tallest trees around the world are usually found in cooler climates rather than in highly competitive tropical regions, but there's an exception to this rule, the Yellow Maranti. It's a species that grows in Borneo, Malaysia, and Thailand, where it thrives in the warm, humid forests and grows taller than all other trees in order to capture as much light from above the canopy as possible. Not only is this the tallest tree on the Asian continent, but it's the tallest known species of flowering plant and the tallest type of tropical tree, with one specimen called Minara, measuring 331 feet tall. This name, which means tower in Malay, surely does the tree justice. As well as being tall, it has a circumference of 130 feet and an extremely straight trunk. Estimates carried out by the research team that first studied it suggest the tree weighs as much as 90 tons, not including its roots, with 90% of the mass being within the trunk. What's even more impressive is that it's able to support this weight and height despite being located on an incline, and it's believed there could well be other specimens that could reach even higher if they've grown on a more stable foundation. Number 1. Coast Redwood, 377 feet Thought to live for more than 2,000 years, the coastal redwood is not only one of the tallest trees on Earth, but one of the oldest known organisms on our planet. They're native to coastal regions of California, where they once grew across a more than 200 million acre region before logging and clearing began in the mid-19th century. There are now only a few coastal redwood groves left, all of which are within a narrow strip of land, and the largest of all grow within deep valleys and gullies, where there's regular fog, permanent streams, and were far more difficult for loggers to reach. In the right conditions, it's incredible how tall this species can grow, with specimens known to have reached a height of 377 feet and a trunk diameter of 30 feet. The main factors that affects their size is the availability of fog, which helps the trees to overcome the difficulty in transporting water to the higher parts of the tree, which require a huge amount of pressure. Amazingly, despite now only being found in one specific part of the world, fossil evidence has shown that this species has, in fact, been around for more than 15 million years and was once prevalent across Europe and Asia until around 5 million years ago, and as far south in the U.S. as Los Angeles until around 10,000 years ago during the last ice age. Watch our nature playlist for more top 15 videos about beautiful nature. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best nature videos.